fellow Toastmasters, welcome guests. Fiction versus non-fiction. I've always had a problem with overcomplicating things. I don't always take the simplest path. I can sometimes overanalyze. And this has caused a problem in some areas of my life. One was university, but it's also affected the less obvious areas. Yes, as you can see here, even my reading of books have become a victim of this overcomplication. I used to read so many fiction books. I used to lose hours in them immersed in those worlds. I especially liked fantasy. I liked the sword battles, the battles in general, the magic, the sorcery, the characters, the character development. Even as I speak now, I can feel the passion from when I was a child reading comic books, Judge Dredd, Conan, I don't know if anybody else read those as well. But one day, even with that kind of passion, I started to feel guilty about my overindulgence. I started to look at all the hours I was spending in those worlds. I started to equate it to time I wasn't spending developing myself. I started thinking about all the time I could have spent reading about business, health and fitness, personal development, anything, things that were practical to my life. And so in typical, drastic, Carl Davis fashion, I decided to curtail my reading of fiction. But was this the right decision? Was I being silly, unrealistic? Was I just being plain stupid? Furthermore, was I overlooking the benefits that fiction can give? By the end of this speech, I will answer those very questions. I will share two of my favorite books with you, one fiction, one non-fiction, and I will give the briefest book review you have ever heard in your life. I will share one thing I like about each book, the benefit I think I've gained from each book, and then I will summarize by stating whether I was right or wrong to quit fiction. Okay, so number one in the fiction category, and I've been practicing this, practicing this, is the, 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 it's gone wrong, okay. <laughs> the Game of Thrones. Now this is quite a common book, it's quite an obvious book, a lot of people like this. There's a TV series about it, and the best way I can describe this book is a clash between the supernatural and the politics of Rome, or the Victorian politics, or the betrayal, or the backstabbing you could imagine would happen. It's a melting point. It clashes both of these worlds together. This book is written by George R. Martin. What do I especially like about this book? Well, for those of you who have read it, it's got to be the character's dialogue, as grim as that sounds. This is the only book I know of where you fall in love with the main characters, and before you know it, they're dead. Seriously, you, you wouldn't believe it. I was so shocked reading all these fantasy books over the years. Characters are always lasting to the end, it's a happily ever after story. And within the first quarter of this book, somebody who was very close to me died. So that's the main thing I like about this book, it's refreshing, it's something different. What benefit has it given me? Well, this fiction book, like all other fiction books, as I was thinking, it's allowed me to use my imagination. Reading these books over the years means that I'm really vivid in creating these worlds in my mind. And I think that's important because I think creativity in daily life is important. Even though I say I can overcomplicate things, I like to be able to look from outside the box and imagine things that other people may be unseeing. I think that's how plays in the sky started. I think that's how cars on the road started. And so I think it's good to flex my mental muscle, use my imagination, and read fiction books such as this. So that's book review number one. Game of Thrones by George R. Martin. Book number two. Da, da, da. Technology in the house. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is an e-reader, and the e-book I am talking about, which you can't see, is a book called Your First Hundred Million. It's written by Dan Pena. It's a self-development book to help you become successful. Dan Pena himself, he was born in the ghettos of America, he's Spanish, he's about 70 years old 
now, but you managed to turn this life around basically, made millions and millions, and then you became a development coach. What do I like, especially about this book? It's not politically correct. It's the first time I came across somebody who said it wasn't easy to be successful. It was the first time I came across somebody who said not everybody can be successful. It's the first time I, went, I came across somebody who swears and said that people swear in the boardroom. He says that a lot of people who become development coaches have actually made money outside of self-development. So it was a breath of fresh air, it was something real. And I really resonated with that. What's the main benefit I took from this book? Well, probably the talk of an emotional bank account. We've all probably known what this means, you know, you can be financially wealthy, but you have to be emotionally as well. But he states some of the things he had to sacrifice to be as successful as he was. He made a lot of money in the oil business, and he stated that when he first started, he wasn't there for 262 days of his daughter, the first year of his daughter's life. He says that he missed the birthdays. He said that in a level of importance, his wife would probably put his business, his kids, his dog, and then her. Now, I'm not saying that's right, and he doesn't say it's right either. But he says these are the sort of sacrifices you have to think of if you want to really reach the highest levels of success. And so again, that was refreshing to me because it was the first time I heard such a cold, bleak, but honest view. And it really makes me realize how difficult it is and what I have to give up to be as successful as I want. So that's the second book review, Your First 100 Million by Dan Pena. And that's the book review over. So to summarize, was I wrong or right to quit fiction? Well, the answer to that question is both of these books, or all four of these fiction books, now have a place beside my bedside. They have benefits, just like non-fiction books have benefits, and there's a place for both in my world. I hope you liked the quickest book review you've ever heard. And if you're one of those rare people who are crazy like me, I will overcomplicate something as simple as a book, then it's okay to read fiction. Thank you.